Hi again, this is a um, show and tell case that's more dedicated for seniors, but juniors, uh, stick around, you're going to learn one or two things, hopefully. I'll give you a chance to have another look at this uh, chest CT that's performed with intravenous contrast on a 49-year-old female patient. With a keen eye, you might have noticed this uh, well-defined oval and slightly heterogeneous soft tissue density. The density is located within the fat. This is the fat here within the anterior mediastinum, just in front of the left brachycephalic vein. The abnormality is located also behind the uh, sternum, and it does not show any surrounding inflammatory changes, uh, any features of fat infiltration or invasive features into the adjacent structures. Now, though some of you might have noticed this, the uh, significance of this finding may go unnoticed in daily practice. The reason is we do see commonly uh, small subcentimeter lymph nodes within various mediastinal compartments, including the anterior mediastinum. And most of these are of no clinical significance, uh, long-standing and reactive. However, in this case, uh, there is a uh, subtle, um, very uh, soft hint of this soft tissue abnormality being heterogeneous in appearance. Now, this also is not very reliable since you could have some heterogeneous low density within a small reactive lymph node due to averaging of the fatty hilum. We know that the lymph node has a normal fatty hilum in many cases. So you cannot depend on that alone. Here's the coronal image on the same CT. Uh, showing you that the uh, lesion is slightly lobulated, has some low density within, in the same location that we described on the axial imaging. Now more of the same on the sagittal uh, reconstruction. You see the soft tissue abnormality here, anterior to the vessel and posterior to the sternum. Once I give you more clinical information about this patient, everything changes. I'll tell you that this is a patient who uh, was uh, presenting to ER with multiple episodes of uh, flank pain, had uh, several uh, ultrasound and abdominal CT imaging showing uh, multiple uh, and recurrent renal stones. Her investigation uh, subsequently showed that she has a high calcium level and a high level of parathyroid hormone. So now you know you're looking at a case of hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism has three types. The first type is the primary type, which is a result of a primary neoplasm arising from the uh, parathyroid gland, and that could be an adenoma, hyperplasia, or carcinoma. The other type is the most common, which is secondary hyperparathyroidism, that results from typically long-standing renal failure. And as renal failure leads to hypocalcemia, the parathyroid gland tries to compensate by uh, becoming active, and that results in hyperparathyroidism. The third type, which is uh, the least common, where the uh, parathyroid gland becomes uh, basically crazy. It does not stop secreting uh, parathyroid hormone in the context of renal failure, even if renal failure is corrected and that's what we call an autonomous uh, parathyroid adenoma. Now, if the patient has renal failure, the uh, cause of hyperparathyroidism is obvious. It's usually secondary or less commonly tertiary type. If the patient does not have an obvious reason to uh, be uh, in a hyperparathyroid status, then you need to make sure that you're not missing a parathyroid tumor, and the commonest would be an adenoma. So basically, you'd like to find the adenoma, and this question is extremely important because that has surgical implications. Nowadays, uh, you want the least invasive, more precise uh, approach to surgically resect the adenoma. Now, where does a normal parathyroid gland live? 
It typically lives uh, behind the thyroid gland. So this is high at the uh, region of the thoracic inlet. You see the uh, dense homogeneous uh, thyroid gland in front of this dark uh, tracheal column. Uh, typically, you'd see that the parathyroid gland should live uh, posterior to the thyroid or surrounding the thyroid. That's why they call it a juxtathyroid location. In uh, real life, you do not typically see the thyroid gland because it's a very small gland that's adjacent to the uh, thyroid itself. In a case of primary hyperparathyroidism, you want to make sure that you don't have an enlarged additional structure in this location to explain the uh, hyperparathyroidism on the basis of a parathyroid adenoma. Now what makes this very difficult is uh, that uh, a parathyroid adenoma is not always in its classic location. It could be in a different location, namely an ectopic area. One of the uh, common ectopic regions would be uh, in the mediastinum. Uh, it could be even ectopic within uh, the uh, tracheoesophageal groove, uh, might be seen within the uh, carotid sheath, and uh, it could even be located uh, within the thyroid gland and look like a thyroid uh, cyst or a nodule. So one of the reasons to do a CT scan on such a patient is uh, to make sure to uh, find the location of the uh, parathyroid adenoma. In this case, you have to suspect that this is the uh, parathyroid adenoma in an ectopic uh, mediastinal location within the anterior mediastinum here. In many cases, a parathyroid adenoma has a specific pattern of enhancement. And uh, that's why the single phase CT scan is not the best way to look for parathyroid adenomas. A better way is to have a multi phase CT, which we uh, call as a uh, 4D CT. The 4D CT is an interesting concept that I will discuss in a different case. For now, on this simple CT, we actually detected the soft tissue abnormality and we suspected this to be the uh, parathyroid adenoma leading to the primary hyperparathyroidism. Now, how to confirm this? In such cases, uh, don't forget to uh, ask for technetium systemi B nuclear medicine. Nuclear scintigraphy here is an extremely powerful tool. It would show you high uptake, uh, whether it's unifocal or multifocal, and it makes the search uh, for a parathyroid adenoma, especially if small like this, much, much easier. And this is the uh, system EB scan. You see the uh, thyroid uptake, and you also see this abnormal focus of uptake here within the mediastinum, corresponding to what we saw on the CT scan and confirming the location of the parathyroid adenoma. So to summarize, we know that one of the pathologies that could happen in the anterior mediastinum is an ectopic parathyroid adenoma. Of course, it would be easier to call such an abnormality in the proper clinical context. This brings me to the important point of always correlating what you see with the clinical information. Good clinical information results in a good uh, report from the radiologist. Another point is if you're going to look for a parathyroid adenoma, it's better to have a 4D CT, which we'll talk about later. And don't forget to ask for a nuclear scintigraphy because that's a very good way of localizing unifocal or multifocal normal or ectopic parathyroid adenomas. Thanks for watching. Don't hesitate to send your uh, comments uh, and discussions. Um, I hope this was useful, and if that's the case, uh, please help spread the word about the account, whether uh, this account on Snapchat or Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, or the website. And uh, I'll thank you again and see you with more cases uh, later. Hi again. This is a uh, quick uh, show and tell case that's uh, basically for juniors. Uh, seniors, uh, you probably know this, but stick around if it's the first time you hear about this. Now, this is a lateral chest radiograph. This is anterior where you have the sternum. This is uh, posterior where you have the spine. This is the cardiac uh, opacity. My question is, what do you think this opacity is here? So what do you think this opacity here where you see that line? 
So this is a linear opacity that seems to traverse the uh, diaphragm. If you have the uh, diaphragms here, you see this opacity traversing the diaphragms and reaching the heart. And the only structure that could do that is actually the uh, IVC, or the other structure which is far away from here and is not clearly seen is the descending aorta. So this is the IVC. To make this more clear, this is a, a sagittal view on a CT scan of the chest. Uh, this is anterior where you have the sternum, this is posterior where you have the spine. You could see the heart here. You could also see the uh, aortic arch and descending aorta. But if you go to the uh, side, you could notice that there is this vascular structure, which is the IVC, that goes all the way to empty into the heart, mainly into the right atrium. And this is the opacity that we asked about on the chest radiograph. To summarize, you could actually see the IVC on a lateral radiograph in many patients. The visibility would depend on some technical factors and factors related to the patient, such as his position. Uh, it's important to recognize it and understand that this is not pathologic. It also has some importance when it comes to uh, a radiographic sign that I will discuss in a future clip. By that, I thank you for watching, and uh, let's see you with more cases later.